What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for Disgaea 6. Now in this video guys, I'm going to be showing you all the two best ways to farm item points. Now if you don't know, item points are used to upgrade your items via the item world NPC in a bunch of different ways. So you can increase the stats of them, the jumping ability, the movement, attack range, counter attacks, critical rate, and if you're really, really, really silly, you can also increase the population and the rarity level. Seriously though, don't, don't get these guys, just get these from killing the, uh, the bosses every 10 stages, okay? Now, when it comes to actually maxing out an item, this is where things get really, really expensive. So, as you can see right now, my Neo Ball Sword has 300 billion attack. Now, once you actually manage to beat Rooksasha Ball, you can actually take the stats of items all the way up to 999 billion. Before you beat that fight though, unfortunately the cap is only 300 billion in stats. No idea what the HP or SP cap is because, uh, let's be honest, nobody's ever going to hit that because of how long it would take. Now, when it comes to actually maxing a stat out, you could go through the item world and just keep killing the bosses over and over and over and, you know, upgrading the kill bonus and things like that. But that would take you literally years with how low the stat gain is on Disguise 6. So the real way of upgrading your items is by using these bills. But as you can see right now, they're expensive, needing 100 million points a single time. So to completely max out a single item, you're going to need quite a few billion points. Now, just for uh, just for information, for a Barefoot X, if you want to completely master that out, I believe it's somewhere around 180 billion item points that you need. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about how we're actually going to earn that many, shall we? Now, there are two methods in this video that I'm going to be showing you guys. There is an early game and a late game method. Now, the early game method earns you about 20 million points for about 15 minutes of work. So, realistically, well, I say 15, it's more like 9 to 10 minutes. But, realistically, you're looking at about 100 to 150 million points an hour. There will be some variation in this because it does have a little RNG involved. But again, those are pretty much the rough numbers that I keep getting with this method. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need to use a lot of thieves. And the main reason for that is because of their ability, their... Uh, well, when I find it... Right there, so Grand Theft. Now, what Grand Theft is, is it's a stealing ability that will target every enemy on the map. So you actually have the potential to steal an item from every single enemy. So by having nine thieves with uh, that ability and you know just spamming that ability over and over that effectively gives us nine steal chances on every enemy on the map. But we're also going to be combining this with the hasty rush ability which basically uses the first attack the unit uses and it allows them to use it again automatically. So when these characters use Grand Theft, they won't only use it once, they'll use it twice on the first turn, allowing us to get 18 steal attempts straight off the bat, which is actually what we're going to be abusing right now. Now, for this method, I do suggest being in Rooksasha mode, just because the item points are very, very marginally higher. But if you can't do Rooksasha, don't worry, just do it in Carnage mode. Also, make sure in the cheat shop you lower enemy strength because it's not really going to change anything. All it's going to do is give the monsters high stats, which is going to make it more difficult for you to steal. And then go all the way over to Auto Sal. Make sure you turn that off. Because if you see down at the bottom right there, while auto-battling, items will be sold for the regular 1 100th of the price. We don't want that. We want the full price, so make sure you turn auto-sell off. Now, when it comes to uh, DI, so the Demonic Intelligence, we're going to set our thieves all up in the same exact way. Which is actually going to be really simple. We're just going to target enemy forces, use Grand Theft. That is the same for all of the thieves. We are also going to have a War Lady here. The War Lady, it doesn't really matter how you set the War Lady up. To be honest, just make sure she has free laws so she doesn't kill your party members when doing this method. And you could also go for the Treasure Hunt with the Treasure Appraisal and the Lucky Finger royalties as well because it will give you a couple 
couple more items up here run, but it's not really necessary. As long as your war lady though can actually kill the units on the map that we're going to do now, then you're going to be perfectly fine. So, uh, I've gone through all of that, uh, make sure your war lady is strong enough. Now let's actually get into the stage, shall we? In fact, I need to just double check their demonic intelligence. Yeah, so it's all set up. Oh yeah, I didn't actually show you the war lady. My bad, guys, my bad. So with war lady, I'm just going to wait uh, for uh, the feast to actually do all the stealing. Then we're going to target the enemy forces and we're going to use full strike. Now, some people are mentioning that they have slowdowns when using the wait command. I personally haven't experienced that. So that's why I'm still using that. If this does give you like a slowdown though, like if the uh, the war lady doesn't act straight away after the thieves do the stealing, just remove this wait until other units have acted. So all you would then need is enemy forces and full strike. And what you can then do to ensure that the war lady attacks after all the thief steals is on your dispatch list, just move the war lady all the way down to the bottom. Because one thing that happens with demonic intelligence is it still acts in the way that your dispatch list is. So right now, with my current setup, the War Lady would always act first, and then the Thiefs would act. So that is just one thing to keep in mind. But again, I haven't experienced any slowdown, so I don't bother with that. I just use the wait command. Now, with that said, we're going to go to the dimension guide for this. And the stage that we want is TV to the movie world, which I believe is stage eight. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's eight. So we're going to go to eight, two, which is stairs of courage. Now, again, you can use the um, L or R buttons on the switch controller to change the difficulty. Normal, carnage, Rick Sasha. There is a slight difference in points you earn from each difficulty. But honestly, Carnage is fine if you can't do Rick Sasha, so don't worry about that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to load the stage up and we're going to talk about what happens. So as you can see right here, we have a bunch of enemies. There are six enemies in total and there are also some, uh, some Geo symbols. What's going to happen is the Feasts are all going to come out. They're going to steal these items from the enemies. Yes, they're all normal. They're low level. Um, but we can still, you know, we're, we're basically using quantity over quality here to get these points. And obviously this is the, uh, you know, the fresh into post game method sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly just lower the speed down to times two so everybody can see. And then we're just going to enable auto battle. So right now all of our thieves are just going to keep stealing. With that done now, we're going to just kill all the units. And then we're going... You know what? I forgot one little thing that uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go quickly change that, I think. So one of the things that uh, I did really forget to mention is you need to change one other thing in the cheat shop. Oh man, this is this is going great. This is how you know this video was done uh, in one go. Right, so make sure you have back to square one on. Oh, I can't believe I forgot that. But yeah, so we're back to square one on. You want to go to the stage that I was just in, which is TV to Movie World, Stairs of Courage. The reason we want back to square one on is because once these units actually die, what's going to happen is we're going to have another wave of units spawn in. So let's quickly start it off again. So as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of stealing going on there. Everything dies and then another wave of enemies spawn in. So on the second turn, what's going to happen now is once again, the thieves are going to start stealing. And then once the thieves have done their stealing, our war lady is going to go ahead and kill the enemies. Obviously, the enemies unfortunately destroyed the treasure chest that time, so I didn't actually get them. Which is a shame, you know, I, I would have liked to get the treasure chest as well, but what can you do? All you have to do then, once you've done that, is do that for about 10 minutes or so, and that will give you a full inventory of items, which you can then go ahead and take to the item world, uh, NPC, and trade them all in for points. A full inventory doing that method gives you anywhere between 17 and 21 million points. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the best method.
So the method I just uh, talked about is an early post game one. It gives you anywhere from 100 to 150 million an hour. The method I'm about to show you, it gives you over 500 million points an hour. And it's definitely one of the best ways to do this. Now, ideally, you want two war ladies for this. Now, normally I use my Diva and Tommy, but they're still prinnies for me right now because of doing uh, Rooksasha Ball. And I just haven't changed them back and uh, leveled them up yet. So I'm going to be showing this off using my Vin character. Now, again, it's the same as just basically, you know, all we really need is treasure hunt, uh, treasure appraisal, uh, lucky finger. That's all we need for this. And it's also the only unit we need out on the field. The only reason I said it's ideal to have two war ladies is because it is a tiny, tiny bit faster. One of the other things I do want to mention as well, though, is make sure you go to the skill shop and lower the level of the full strike skill. Because at level 9999, it's going to cost 2 QT SP each time. That is way, way, way too much, and it is just not sustainable. You will not get that amount back. So I typically just have it on around level 6,000 because I know I can always regenerate that. One of the other things to put on as well is there is an ability which restores your SP when you attack, which is called Magic Collection. Recover SP equal to 5% of damage dealt. We're going to be doing more than like more than enough damage to regain a simple 200 quadrillion SP. So that's why I go for the level 6,000. Now with this setup, what we're actually going to do is we're not going to go into a Ruxosha item. And the reason for that is Full Strike is really, really weak on Ruxosha items. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and clear out my inventory of items just so I can show you guys how much we earn really, really quickly. And I'm just going to go to a normal Carnage item. So let's just jump in, shall we? Now what's going to happen here is really, really straightforward. War Lady is going to come out. She's just going to blast everything. Everything's going to die. Eventually. Now, ideally, what I would have done is I would have targeted the enemy force, moved to far east attack range, and then use full strike. Just because then it can typically get everything in lock, like in its aim at once. Not really going to do that just for this video. Like, there's not really a whole lot of points. And of course, now I did get uh, amnesia, which is typical. It's just typical, man. Typical. But no, uh, what you want to do for that is the equipment on your war lady. Just make sure you have the typical abilities for things like... Um, uh, abilities? The typical innocence for things like, you know, your status immunities and things like that. Just for extra assurances. Also, make sure you turn auto sell back on in the cheat shop and turn off legendary and rare sales. The reason for that is by doing this method, all we actually want is the rares and the legendary items from the treasure chests that we're going to find in the item world and from killing the enemies. And as I mentioned, this method will end up giving you about 500 million item points an hour. Could be a little bit more if you get super, super ridiculous strong and you're able to do this in Rixosha items. The chances of that, though, are slim until you already have a few perfect items. So, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then please be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. As always, though, everybody, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.